and hello again and here we are in my garage for part two of the upgrades to my Norley here. Now in part one I replaced the rear shocks from being a cheap and cheerful pair of YSS shocks to this rather nice set of custom built shocks by Hagon and they're called Nitros. While at the front I resprayed the fork lowers from silver to satin black. So here in part two what I want to do is to upgrade the hydraulics on the bike. But before I can do that, I'd like to address some really annoying oil leaks I've got out of the engine that have been there since I built the bike. And I think finally it's time to try and find them and fix them. And so to make a start, it seems that the worst oil leak is coming from this area here. Certainly that's where the drips are coming from. And sure enough, if you felt down here with your finger, you can feel oil on this lower frame rail. So where could it be? Where could it be? And I must say, I thought the issue would be round about the oil lines to and from the oil filter. And one reason to suspect it might be the oil filter, or its housing rather, is because I had to mount it in a really odd place. Now I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but the oil filter is right here, my finger is. It's between the back wheel and the back of the engine. Not an ideal to place to put it, but it's the only place I had left on the bike to find a space to uh, mount an oil filter. But having said that, I've now checked the oil filter lines here. These lines go in and out of the oil filter housing and they're dry. There's no oil at all, so it's not that, thank God. However, if I now follow down these oil lines, I get to the bottom, lowest point, and sure enough, they're covered in oil. And that implies that the oil leak is not coming from here, but perhaps it's coming from either somewhere above here and dripping down, or it's coming from somewhere forward. Now these oil lines go forward to the oil pump, which is behind here. So I suspect I've got to take this cover off and uh, investigate some more. And so with all the bolts removed and the big nut holding this cover in place, I came along to remove it from the engine and I hit a problem. Let's see if I can show you what the problem is. A bit tricky because I'm doing it from the wrong side. And as I pull it off, unfortunately, it hits the exhaust system. Again, it's because this is all non-standard and this downpipe is in the way. So I'm going to have to remove this downpipe, remove the silencer, get it off the bike and finally I can then remove this thing and hopefully see what's going on with the oil lines as they go into the oil pump down here somewhere. It's all a bit of a pain but that's what happens when you build a one-off bike. And there it is off at last. That's the sprocket cover gone. And now hopefully I can access some more of these oil lines. So I'll come back in five minutes and we'll see what I can find. And now here I am lying on the floor once again, trying to see what's going on. And what I found is just one of these hose clamps was a little bit loose, that one there. So I've tightened it up and fingers crossed that may have been the problem, but somehow I doubt it because that oil line wasn't too, too bad. It didn't feel very oily at all. I've checked all the rest, they all look fine. So I've gone back to my, potentially my first idea, which is that this breather tube here, which comes down here and ends, not sure you can see it, but it ends right there, right there, which is just in front of where all the oil was. So I'm just wondering if when I fired the bike up, having let it sit for so long, you know, there's oil where it shouldn't be and it's blown out of here and along the back here. So I think what we'll do now is I'll put it all back together again and at some point I'll fire it up and run it for a little while and we'll see if my little fix solved the problem or perhaps even the fact that this oil line here, this breather line had oil in it, maybe it's been wet something or something so maybe it'll clear itself. Anyway, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. So that was all a bit of a waste of time really but as I say I did find one, one small problem there. That clamp, that Jubilee clamp there was, was um, a little bit loose. Anyway, let's now put it all back together again and uh, we'll move on. And now it's time to move on to upgrade the hydraulics of the bike and I think we'll start off with this piece here. Now what we've got is a homemade hydraulic clutch conversion. The bike was originally cable clutch but I converted it to hydraulic using this slave cylinder from Honda Blackbird and this adapter here. Um, nothing wrong with it, it works quite well but I think it could look a bit better. So in this parcel here we have an upgrade and in here, let's get it out, we have, get it out of here, a similar upgrade, this time from Oberon. It's made to fit a Honda 
Blackbird, so it's the same as this. So hopefully, it's just going to be unbolt this, bolt this on, get it bled, no great problem. And the reason I got this was because I was very impressed with the version I bought for my Z project, and uh, I thought it would look pretty good on here. And so now let's unbolt this piece and get this new old run slave cylinder on the bike. And so now I've removed the old slave cylinder, so I'll pull out this push rod. There we go. And let's just do a quick test fit on the new one. Let's have a look. Oh, hang on. Yeah, oh god. Right, well, as often happens when you build a one-off part, this new Oberon slave cylinder doesn't fit inside my adapter piece here. It does fit the original uh, Blackbird piece here, that new slave, no problem at all, plenty of room. But this one, it doesn't. Now, maybe that's because this is built to high spec, I have no idea. But yeah, look at that, doesn't fit, doesn't fit at all. So, I think what we'll have to do is take this adapter piece off and just tickle it out a little bit and take off a few thou until this fits in here. So as always, things are never too easy, are they? Okay, here it comes off. It was actually very tight. I had to use a strap wrench to remove it. That's fine. I never unscrew this, you'll see how it works. Um, originally this was a um, cover, a little cap there, to um, adjust a clutch. So got rid of that and we've got this instead. That's off now, so we need to take these two pieces and hopefully machine that one out so we get a nice tight fit between the two. And that's what's next. Here we are back on again. I've got a new slave in place, everything's ready to go. I've now just got a bleed system and hopefully we'll be done. Except there's a problem, which I think you can see, and that is that unlike the original Honda slave, this one has a logo across it, which should be flat and parallel with the ground. But because this screws in and it's not quite right, it's not quite vertical, this logo isn't right. And I could live with it, but no. I've got to fix that problem and to fix it I think what I'll have to do is remove the whole thing and take this adapter back to the workshop and have a tiny amount machined off the face where it hits the case here now I don't know how to take off so I think it's gonna be a case of take off a thou bring it back try it out maybe it's right maybe it's not and go back and and take off another thou what I don't want to do is just go in there, machine off too much, and it ends up turning the whole thing too far the other way. And so rather than pointing this way, it's pointing this way. So yeah, a bit of a pain. So what I've got to do now is take the whole thing off again, and go back to workshop again, and get this thing on a, well there goes a, a seal, but never mind. Um, and with it being screwed on really tight, I'm just using my strap wrench to help it off, because I can't do it by hand. Here we go, let's have a look. Come on, there you go. That worked quite well. Let's get that off there. And now we can screw it. Yet again. And take it apart. Take this bit back to workshop and have this face here machined back. As I say, have no idea how much. We'll start off with maybe a thou or two thou, bring it back, try it, and hopefully get there in the end. And now here we are, back home again. And let's see if that tooth that we took off, the adapter, has done the job. Make sure it's nice and tight. We've got the new slave here, the new slave. Let's quickly check it out. Let's see. How's that? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think by more luck than judgment, taking off tooth thou has done the job. And now everything's level and how it should be. Yeah, the Oberon logo's now parallel with the ground and the bleed nipples is now straight up which is pretty damn good so i'm pretty happy with that so now what i've got to do is take it all off and reassemble it with a new seal and then hopefully just got to um bleed the system and it should all work and that's what's next and finally there it's back on the bike and the Oberon logo is now parallel with the ground as it should be so now all i've got to do is bleed the system and see how it works 
But before I do that, I've still got plenty to do, and so let's crack on. And next we have a very small upgrade, which is to replace this chromed nut on the end of the axle here, on the front wheel. And the reason is because it's done, which I don't like, and it's also chromed, and that chrome is now peeling off. That's been for some time, so don't like it, it's gonna have to go. So let's quickly remove it. It's bloody tight, so here's my big extension bar there. Take it off, and what I've got to replace it with is one of these. It's just a simple uh, cabin plated nut. Now it's actually UNF, I think, it's three quarts UNF. And I wanted to buy a stainless steel version of this, but it turns out one costs about 20 pounds, which is ridiculous. So I use this instead, but then I hit a problem because this is nylock and there's not enough thread to bring the nylock into play, so that's not ideal. So what I did next was to take one of these nuts to the workshop, this one here, I'm not sure you can tell, but I've machined off about 4.5 to 5 millimeters off the end of it. So maybe, maybe now, hopefully, this now shortened nut will go on here. Actually the thread might not be perfect, here we go. And it will be able to engage the nylock. Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? It's just about engaging. What it also can do, of course, is to remove this rather thick washer behind it and feed a thinner washer. That's also another option. But I think for now, that's not so bad. In the meantime, I do want to replace this this new piece with a stainless steel version of this to match the rest of the bike. But as I say, they're like 20 pounds for one. So I think we'll have to machine one up at some point and make it look a bit better than a standard um, boring old nut. We can put a flange on it, for example. Yeah, so we'll get that on there nice and tight. There we go. And now that's a lot more secure and I've got rid of this rusty old dome nut that actually came off the original donor bike. And moving on then, the next small problem I've got, which is quite an irritating problem, concerns this o-ring here, which I use to help support the oil tank. And the problem is they break, because here's one I've just changed. And luckily I've got a bag of them, I've got about 10 of them, so if one breaks, it's not such a great problem. But the issue I've got is that these are o-rings and these are made to be strong in compression. They're not very strong in extension, and I think that's why they break. So even though these are pretty damn thick, as you can see, they don't last long on the bike when they're being stretched like this. So I did have an idea of using a zip tie, because that way I can adjust it just right. The slight problem with that idea is that the uh, zip tie plastic is quite hard, and it'll probably dig into the paint on the hook behind here, and eventually wear it away, and that'll cause a rust spot. So then I thought, well, perhaps I could still use a, a zip tie but get some kind of tube or something some sort of soft tube and push it through and so the zip tie is sort of inside the tube and thus i'll protect my paintwork but so far i've not really found anything suitable to use but i'm still looking i'm still looking but in the meantime i have to say i have got bags of these things i've got at least two bags i've got 20 of them but given the fact that this is broken just leaving it on the bike unused for a few months I don't think they're going to last very long when the bike's being run on the road. So that's something I need to address. I just don't yet have a solution. And hello again. And here we are back in my garage. And for me, it's the first time I've been in here for about two months because I've just not had time or indeed inclination to be in here working on my best projects. Uh, it's now late November. We've been in our second wave lockdown here in the UK, or rather in England, for a few weeks now, and it will continue, I think, until the 2nd of December. And um, that makes things very difficult to try and get stuff done. I can't go and visit Jeffrey's workshop. It's difficult to buy stuff without uh, just ordering it online. So yeah, it's been a bit uh, tricky to try and get anything done. But anyway, here we are. So we'll make a start on this hex bolt I've had in here in my vice for about two months because I'm just going to do a bit of work on it before it goes on my gnarly. So let's make a start. And as you can see, I've got this stainless steel hex bolt clamped into my vice, where it's been for about two months now. And the reason it's there is so that I can file down two flats on the head. Doing that by hand with a hand file, 
and it's really, really boring. So come back when finished and I'll show you why I'm doing that. Okay, so the reason why I've been falling down the head of this stainless steel bolt is so that it will slide into the mount of this silencer, like so. So the file down there, and slide down. Now, the reason why I've done that is because the Mark I version I had, this one here, see that? It also fits, but it's a little bit shorter by about, I don't know, three, maybe four millimeters. And that only just, that one only just um, engaged with the nylock of the nylock nut that held this in place. So it wasn't ideal. So I knew about that a while ago, but it's just so boring to do. That I've only just now come back to doing it. So that can now go back on the bike and uh, hopefully it'll stay there. And now there's a silencer back on the bike again, and hopefully that's where it's gonna stay. Now, I do have quite a few other small upgrades I wanna to make to the bike over the winter time, but for now, I'm gonna to have to stop because this bike's gonna to have to go back into my conservatory at the back of the house, where there's no room to work whatsoever because I need the space in here to continue working on my Guzzy project, which is currently in the back of the house. And the reason for that is that I sent off the paintwork, the bodywork rather, for paint, uh, let's see, in September, it's now late November, and I've got a call from the painter to say it's imminent, it's going to start it in December, and it'll be ready by the first week of January. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. And that means I've got to get the bike completely finished, ready to take that new paintwork when it returns at the beginning of the year. And so for the time being then, work's going to stop, on the Norley to make room for my Guzzy project. And so no doubt my next video is going to be about the Guzzy. So anyway, thanks for watching and cheers.